Well, thank you very much. It's my great honor to be here today with some of the leading pastors and faith leaders from across our nation. These are great people, most of whom I know. And uh, my administration is open 100 percent, and we have been. Uh, we've had uh, tremendous support, and I appreciate it. I appreciate you all being here today. Uh, in case you don't know, that's called the media. <laughs> wonderful people. I like you better. <laughs> I'm very happy to welcome uh, these great leaders, including my good friends, Pastor Paula White, Bishop Harry Jackson, Dr. Alveda King. Thank you for being here, by yes, the way. Daryl Scott, who's been with me from, uh, I think, before I even announced. He was saying, you should run. Thank you, Daryl. Today, we'll discuss the progress we've made, and it's been tremendous and the next steps we must take to continue bringing opportunity and safety to all of our citizens. Throughout our history, America's churches and religious leaders have called for change and have inspired us to care for and bring hope back to those in need. So many people in need. These are the people that they do a job, and it's really largely unrecognized, which is uh, something they don't even care about, frankly. They just want to take care of people. But the people realize it, and they, they love you. They love you very much. You know that. By cutting taxes, reducing regulation, increasing American energy, and promoting American manufacturing, a, a situation where, as you remember, uh, the other side of the equation said, people don't want to do manufacturing anymore. I said, well, uh, they don't want to make things. Well, it turns out we're doing record business in manufacturing. We've increased and created 3.7 million more jobs since Election Day. African-American and Hispanic unemployment rates have reached the lowest levels in recorded history, meaning history, uh, the lowest levels ever, African-American and Hispanic, Asian also, women also, 66 years. We've launched a bold workforce training initiative. So far, over 100 companies and associations have already pledged to train and retrain over 4 million Americans. So important, because we have companies, once again, coming back into our country, and they want to employ people. So we're training and working with these people, and we're getting companies to do the same. It's been — actually, it's been a very beautiful thing. We fought hard to include opportunity zones in our tax bill, which, as you know, we have. This tax incentive will bring badly needed investment into distressed communities, communities with high unemployment, communities where it's really tough and tough to get a job. And already we're seeing what's happening. We're seeing the benefits. Our focus on opportunity for every citizen includes helping former prisoners. These citizens reentering society have had a tough time. We want them to get jobs so they don't have to return to a life of crime and go back in to the same prison where they just got out. I mean, this has been a tremendous problem. And uh, the best thing we could do, actually, is uh, exactly what we're doing, creating an environment where the country is doing so well. And prisoners have never, ever, even close, done better than they've done now when they get out, because they're getting jobs. And the reason it's hard to get people, because we're pretty well filled up. So for the first time, probably, I think I could say ever, they're getting a break. And I have to tell you, the people that are hiring prisoners, and you've heard me say it, they're loving them. And I don't mean in every case, but in a big percentage of cases, they're loving them. And these are people that are doing really an incredible job. But uh, a lot of people didn't want to do it. They didn't want to hire prisoners. They're doing it. I have one man, a friend of mine, he's now up to number 10. And I don't say he loved all ten, but he likes seven of them a lot. In fact, he said six of them are better than anybody else he has. I don't think that's a bad percentage, right? <laughs> and he's a fan, and a lot of people are becoming fans. We passed the First Step Act through the House, and we're working with the Senate to pass that into law. And I think we'll be able to do it. When we say hire American, we mean all Americans, every American, everybody. We cannot have opportunity without safety. We're working every day with local and federal law enforcement to reduce violent crime all over the country. I mean, you look all over the world, you think, 
but all over our country. And the numbers are going down. Every American child should be able to grow up in a safe community, surrounded by a loving family with access to a great education that leads to a lifelong career and success and all of the things that go with great success. We also underscore the crucial importance of faith in fostering strong families and communities. And I just want to, again, thank you all for being here. And uh, you're very special people. I don't even know if you know that, but you're very special people. You're admired by everybody in this country. Even if they're not believers, most of them admire what you're doing. But maybe we'll make them believers, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're going to work. And I'd like to ask John Gray if uh, we might, if you could just start off with a prayer. Would you yes, pray? Thank you, John. God, we thank you for an opportunity to speak about the hearts of those who sometimes cannot fight for themselves. Thank you for this moment to be able to share our hearts mm -hmm. with the President mm -hmm. and his administration. Dr. King said, we cannot influence a table that we are not seated at. Mm -hmm. And so we pray that this conversation will be fruitful and productive and honoring of the best traditions of this nation. We further pray that you will continue to give wisdom and insight to our president and his leadership team to be what our nation needs to build this country from the inside out, that we will continue to be a beacon of hope and light around this world. Bless his family, bless his health, and everything that he puts his hands to do. This is our prayer, and bless our time together. Jesus, in your name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jim. I think he's done that before. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Maybe we could go around the room and we'll start, well, my friend, from the beginning. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, Maybe sir. just say a couple of words. If you... I'm so blessed and honored to be here and to be able to pray right here in the White House. Mm -hmm. And the most recent thing I've noticed that you've done, you've done so many things. Uh, that were great. Everybody expects me to talk about the life and the babies, and I could do that, but you opening up the steel mills. And I lived across the street pastors in front of a steel mill in Birmingham. Now, that's when they were bombing us and everything. But the people were at work. So they could go to church, they could give pies, we're they had up. pretty dresses to wear on Sunday, and they weren't hungry. Mm -hmm. So you said you were going to reopen those steel mills. They're opening I'll up. leave it at that. I won't take too much time. The dumping is stopping. <laughs> you know I the saw dumping. That. I saw yeah. it. The yeah. dumping is stopping, and the steel mills are opening. Yes. United States Steel just announced another two plants. Mm -hmm. uh, they're up to eight. Nucor just yesterday opening a big one, a brand new one, two hundred and fifty so million glad. dollars in Florida. So, mm -hmm. The steel mills are coming back. Okay, we need steel in our country. We do. We need it for defense. We need it for a lot of reasons. We can't let that happen. They were ready to be gone. Mm -hmm. It was ready to be extinct. We had to get our steel from other countries. Uh, we can't do that. So thank uh, you, thank sir. Thank you for mentioning really, that. Thank you. I saw thank that. You. Yeah, they I really like opened it. Like it's that. an incredible story. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. John Condor, Las Vegas, Nevada. First of all, Mr. President, I'd like to thank you for recognizing me on the National Day of Prayer for the yes. transformative power of Jesus that had worked in my life. Uh, since that day, I echo your sentiments that the, the, uh, the, the work that's being done in the reentry community as a result of prison reform, uh, there are a lot of employers out there right now that are willing to hire people who right. are coming home from the prison system. One of the things that we've learned was that employers are not, not willing to hire people. They're not willing to hire projects. And because of the existing initiatives, when we're able to help them to be tremendous assets to the employers and not liabilities, then they're hiring them all day long. So we just thank you for the direction that, uh, that uh, the country is going in, uh, and specifically as our, our partnerships with law enforcement are beginning to grow. Our Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department has given us over 60 men and women from the police department that are serving as mentors and trainers for people coming home from the prison system. And I think that is a direct result of the direction that our, our country is going in. So I thank you and your administration for the hard work. Well, thank you very much. And you know, it's something that should have been done a long time ago, prison reform. And Paula and Jared, I, I want to really thank you for the job you've done. It's uh, really incredible. But a lot of people are saying, you mean it's the Trump administration that's doing this? You understand. <laughs> they don't believe it. But we're really making a tremendous amount of progress, and uh, it's a beautiful thing to watch. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. President, uh, Reverend DeJesus from the city of Chicago, from the community of Humble Park, New Life Covenant Church. First of all, let me just say thank you for your boldness. Thank you for taking a stand for those that are uh, disenfranchised. And uh, I want to say that in the city of Chicago, there are so many pockets 
that's not talked about, about revitalization. And I know this is something in your heart, a rebuilding communities. And I look forward to partnering with you and this and your administration to um, revitalize the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. President, my name is Van Moody from the Worship Center in Birmingham, Alabama. And I just want to continue to underscore what's already been said. Thank you for your heart for all people, but particularly your leadership on the issue of prison reform and workforce development. Those are two of the biggest issues facing Alabama. A lot of the individuals that we spend a lot of time ministering to are really hard hit in those areas, corporations. Um, that's the biggest issue right now in Alabama. So thank you for your thank leadership you on this issue. Thank you for being compassionate and caring about all people. It's a great state, too. Yes. Great people. Thank you. Mr. President, Kyle Searcy, Montgomery, Alabama also. I want to echo all that's been said. We're very grateful for your heart toward criminal justice reform, your heart toward the urban communities. It's very, very amazing. Montgomery, Alabama is a city that's known for unity and bringing people together, and so many things have come out of that city, and it's just very encouraging that you have a heart to begin to bring people together, work across the aisle, and get things done. Mm -hmm. Many people on our team pray for you every single day. That's really Thank nice. you, Mr. President. I appreciate it, both. Thank you very much. Mr. President, Philip Godot from Sacramento, California, and don't give up on California. <laughs> 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 please, please don't give up on California. I'm in Sacramento. I'm right in the, the uh, capital there. And we're working in every area to try to make a, a difference in, in the people's life. So I guess the greatest word I can say for you, Mr. President, is that you have given this country expectations, mm -hmm. given us a new hope, a new excitement to believe that things are getting better and going to get better. And we appreciate that leadership. You're tenacity to keep pushing in against all the opposition that comes against you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Very nice. Mr. President Travis Hayes, I am Richard <coughs> Travis Hayes. I'm the CFO of Relentless Church in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm honored to be here among, uh, in the presence of greatness, and I'm excited about the opportunity to uh, learn more. Uh, used to be in law enforcement, so um, I'm really excited to hear about these programs with regards to folks who are just being released from prison and getting back into the workplace. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, Pastor Julian Lowe from Oasis Church in Los Angeles, and I'm very grateful for this administration and for you personally. I didn't grow up in the church, and I was taught growing up that faith and government were completely separated mm -hmm. and completely different. So you uh, offering this roundtable and giving pastors and faith leaders a voice throughout the country. Mm -hmm. I heard about the meeting you had yesterday as well with other faith leaders. And so it's very encouraging, inspiring, and gives me hope to take back to the people of Los Angeles. Honor to be here and thank you very much. Mm -hmm. My honor. Thank you. Mr. President, Penny Perez from Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm so honored to be here with all these incredible men and women. Thank you so much at being a Hispanic leader to see what is happening in the Hispanic community. Mm -hmm. It is the largest, as you know, ethnic community in America and to have the lowest unemployment rate and to see my family members and my community being really empowered to live a life and not just dream, but actually see the dream come reality. Thank you for all that you're doing. It's making a huge difference in Las Vegas and for acknowledging the churches as we partner with you and the government to make a huge difference in Las Vegas and beyond. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. And, you know, the churches weren't so much acknowledged, you know, that over the last number of years we acknowledge. Right. Thank, thank you. These are great, great thank people. You. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Paula White of the Odessa Christian Center, and it's an honor to serve you through our faith initiative and opportunity. Um, thank you for bringing the faith base back to the White House and for all the great things you continue to do. Thank you, Paula. Thank you for everything. Yes, sir. Jared, would you like to say something? Sure. Uh, when you asked me to lead your efforts to try to reform our country's prisons and to see what we can do from the federal government, we were running into a little bit of a problem of politics in Congress. And so I reached out to a lot of you to see if you could help get the word out in your communities and to try to let the people in Washington know that making progress on this issue is more important than whatever political differences people may have. Right. You guys came to the White House, you all mobilized your communities, and we were able to get the bill through the House, and hopefully we'll have the same uh, results in the Senate. What happened from there, though, is it opened a dialogue between this administration and a lot of you, which has led us to believe that a lot of the policies we've been pushing under the President's leadership do help all of your communities and do help your, your, uh, your, your, your different um, 
places where you're, where you're leading, and it's enabled us to open up a further dialogue. So I'm very happy today for everyone to be here today to talk about this administration's efforts for prison reform, but also to discuss what we can work on further together to continue to make a difference for all Americans. That's really nice. And, you know, Jared's working on a lot of very important things. But this has become, I think, just about number one on your list. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought? It's just been uh, great the way you've done it. We all appreciate I think I speak for the room when I say we appreciate it. Yes. Great job. Absolutely. Thank you. Marvin. Mr. President, it's an honor to be here. Um, when you uh, asked us to speak, the first thing I thought about was my grandfather and how it's an honor to be here. And, you know, he passed away a few years ago. But uh, he raised 10 10 kids in the inner city of Detroit. Uh, and when you were speaking, you were talking about how important faith was in the community and how it helps the family. And my, uh, my grandfather did that working odd jobs. He was a taxi driver, he cut hair, he did everything possible, but he also had them in church and he kept them you know, together. He was with his wife, uh, married for I think around 50 years before he passed away. But our family was able to do things that a lot of families you know, aren't able to do without the assistance of the, the, of faith and having church and, and having uh, uh, families together. And so to hear you talking about, you know, keeping that in the community, I think is super important. And I'm just happy for this opportunity and uh, just God bless you and everything you're doing. And thank you, Pastor Paul, as well. Thank you, Mark. Great family. Great family. Uh, Mr. President, it's been an honor to serve you in this administration. Today is a watershed moment. It's an opportunity to uh, learn about a community that's felt left behind um, for years and the things that you're doing under your leadership could drastically change situations and speak for people who can't mm -hmm. speak for themselves. Each one of these leaders speak for forgotten people around this country who have dealt with pain uh, regardless of who was president and this opportunity for you to show your leadership to move things in a different direction. So it's been an honor to serve and uh, look forward to continue to work with you. Yeah, thank you. That's very nice. I appreciate it. Mr. Darrell Scott, um, I've had the honor and privilege to work with then candidate, now President Trump, and uh, to observe him behind the scenes and have a number of personal conversations with him. And people ask me, why do I defend him so vociferously? And I say, it's easy for me to do because I know him. And uh, he, he's shown me his heart, and I know he has a heart for all Americans. And uh, I will say this. This administration has taken a lot of people by surprise, and it's going to surprise you guys even more because this is probably the most proactive administration regarding urban America and the faith-based community uh, in my lifetime. And I'll be 60 years old in December. But if, when I think back on, uh, I mean, you, I use good hair, though. I'm not talking great things. But to be honest, this is probably going to be the, and I'm going to say this at this table, the most pro-black president that we've had in our lifetime because, and I try to, you know, analyze the people that I encounter. This president actually wants to prove something to our community, our faith-based mm -hmm. community and our ethnic community. The last president didn't feel like he had to. He felt like he didn't have to, he got a pass. This president, is, is this administration is probably going to be more proactive regarding urban revitalization and prison reform than any president in your lifetime. We work together, give them a chance, don't pay any attention to uh, these guys back here. Say it, right? And, <laughs> and I it, promise you, we will do something that we will, this, is, this, this administration will continue to make history. It's gonna be a lot of positive change. Great things on the horizon. Well, thank you. I, I have to say one thing about that. So, um, I didn't know him at all. And I'm watching one of the, I would say, unfriendly groups of broadcasters, to put it nicely. and. I said, who is that guy? He was destroying them. I say, who is he? Then I saw him two or three times, and I said, I have to, I have to meet him. But uh, I want to just thank you. You have been incredible. You are some voice. And when I heard, okay, tell him. How long are you married? Tell me. 39 years. Okay. So I thought he was like 35 years old. <laughs> so did you. And then he said, say hello to my wife. And he said, I've been married 39 years. I said, you're married 39 years. I thought you were 35 years old, right? <laughs> but you're doing a good job. You're obviously doing it right because you look great, and we really appreciate yeah, it. We're going to be all right. Right from the beginning. Yeah, Gerard's been working with us a lot. And you know, great. He used to live on my street when he was a kid. <laughs> same city. Good yeah, job. So. Small world. Yeah. Thank you, dude. Appreciate it. Mr. President, I'm Bishop Kevin L. Cabarrus, the Impact Church of Orlando, Florida. I want to thank you, and I echo the sentiments of all of the colleagues that have already spoken 
uh, for your work as it relates to prison reform. And I definitely thank you for your commitment to partnering with the faith-based community. I happen to be in many rooms, and one room in particular, we had a meeting a year ago in the Oval Office, and you say it to all of the faith leaders standing around your desk, that I'm going to untie the hands of the faith-based community. Mm -hmm. I'm going to free you and take the muzzle off of your mouth. Mm -hmm. And in a year's time, I have watched you uh, day by day do just that by freeing the faith community and partnering with us to do what we've been called to do, and that's to impact our community so right. Amen. Well, one of the big things we've done is the Johnson Amendment. You know, yes. you're free to do what you want to do now. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't talk because you were afraid of uh, a lot of bad repercussion. And we, uh, as you know, we've taken that off. That's a bad, that was a bad thing. Yes, it was. That was a bad thing that Lyndon Johnson did a long time ago. You had to have a lot of power to get it done, but you now are free to say what you want. And uh, when you want to support somebody, you support that. It doesn't have to be me. Of course, I hope it's me. <laughs> but uh, you're free. You know, you're the people that we respect. And you were really not able to say what was on your mind. And we want you to say what was on your mind and what is on your mind. So I think uh, getting rid of that is a big, big factor. And at some point in the not-too-distant future, we're going to put it through Congress. In addition to just an executive order, we're going to put it through Congress. We're going to get rid of it permanently, because it should not be here. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to work on that. Thank you. Mr. President, I'm Sharon Nesbitt, senior pastor of Dominion Church in, <coughs> in Arkansas. I want to say thank you for your policies on prison reform and urban initiative. Uh, as you know, Arkansas has one of the largest prison rates in the country, so thank you for uh, getting us back to the table and for your faith-based initiatives to let us come to the table. Thank, thank you. you very much. Great place. Great place. Thank you. Mr. President, my name is Bishop Darrell Hines from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I pastor the Christian Faith Fellowship Church of God in Christ, and I serve on the general board of the Church of God in Christ, where we have a five-point faith-based initiative uh, for inner-city reform, and of course, prison is one of them. And so I appreciate, first of all, being invited to the table. It's an interesting thing, because I was watching news. I watch news all the time. And I saw you on news, this was just last week, and I said, you know, I would love to go and have him hear me. Uh, I, just, I said, I don't know how that's possible. I don't know anybody, who, I think, who knows him. And then I get the call from, I, I, I don't want to call him Coconut, but I get him from Marvin Jr. He calls me and he says, listen, uh, I want you to go with me to the White House. And I think the most interesting thing about this moment is that we hear several things, but to know you hear us is an encouraging moment. And I want to thank you for taking this time to invite us to the White House and then taking the time to hear us concerning our concerns in our community and in our faith, because they both need the ear of the president. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you're surprised you get that call right after. Yes, yeah, right after. Right. God moves in mysterious ways. You know who that's right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. President. My name is Bill Owens, founder and president of the Coalition of African American Pastors. I'm honored to be here with you today. We have met several times. Thank you, Dr. Scott, for the invitation, Paula White, to be here. And we are with you 100%. I'm with Bishop Hines, I'm Church of God in Christ, and we're all in it together. And we will work together to make the difference. Thank you very much. Can I say something? Reverend Owens has been active with several different administrations in the past as well. He worked with President Reagan, am I, am I right? Bush. President Bush. Very close. He marched with Martin Luther King, too. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you very much. And it was my turn to go while everybody was <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, I am certainly honored to be here with you. I'm Pastor Mike Freeman from Spirit of Faith Christian Center. Ten minutes from this house, you are invited any Sunday you would oh, like to come. Good. Sounds good. I'll leave a parking space open for you there so you won't have any opportunity to be delayed. Uh, this is a very critical time that we're in. Uh, one of the things I remember the most and recall about a statement you made when you were running, you said if you were able to win the White House, that Christians would have a friend in the White House. I was really eager to find out whether or not that word would be kept as such to be sitting here with you today 
as a representative of the Christian community. It is so wonderful. I'm elated to know, first of all, you're a man of your word. Secondly, you have an ear to hear from God. With your having an ear to hear from God, this country is in great hands. Mm -hmm. My prayer for you is that your ear will always be open to the wisdom in the spirit of God. Yes. And I'm praying for you constantly, and everything I pray for comes to pass. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> That's very nice. Yes. I'll get over it. Yes, sir. That would be I will great. get over it. Thank you, yes, sir. Mr. President, I'm Bishop Dale Bronner from Atlanta, the senior pastor and founder of Word of Faith Family Worship Cathedral. And uh, I'm from the business world. My father planted a business uh, in the hair cosmetic manufacturing business in 1947. Wow. And uh, so we've been doing business there in Atlanta for all of these years and employing people. So thank you so much. Uh, but I love the stimulation that I see in the economy now. It is the best that it has been in so many, many, yes. many years. And I'm so deeply, deeply grateful for all of the uh, prison reform uh, initiatives that I see underway. That is, that's exciting and enthralling to me as well as the urban uh, initiatives that, that will help minority communities around this country. Thank you so much for your boldness and your courage to do to make great things happen, and you're, you're making them happen. Thank you very much, Jeff. I'm Bishop Harry Jackson, from right here in the D.C. area. First of all, I really feel called to pray for you. Absolutely. And the year before you, as you ran, I felt that burden. I felt that feeling that you were going to win. And I'm so very thankful, as he said, that you're so open. Criminal justice reform is so critical because it prevents many African Americans and Hispanics from becoming a permanent underclass. And I think the opportunity zone concepts that you're working with are critical because it brings green power. We, we really don't need black power unless you've got some green power working with it. black <laughs> power. It brings, it brings green power to our urban areas. So I believe we can break the generational curse of poverty and people who are isolated. And it's because of your boldness. Mm -hmm. And despite all that's been coming against you, you've stood your ground mm -hmm. and you've been a champion. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. John? Mr. President, uh, John Bray, Senior Pastor of Relentless Church in Greenville, South Carolina. And uh, I am grateful for the opportunity to be at this table um, at a time in our country where faith is becoming a bit of a dinosaur uh, in a time of moral relativism and secular humanism. It is refreshing to know <clears throat> that those of us who have committed our lives to fighting for people who cannot fight for themselves have a seat at the table to share our hearts. Um, I believe that the very best principles of scripture uh, call us to fight uh, for the poor, for the oppressed, for those who have made mistakes. Uh, criminal justice reform is an opportunity to give a second and third chance uh, to those who want to become productive members of society. Uh, our nation cannot forget the broken. Uh, it is in the best tradition of our nation to fight for them. And when I think about the history of the church in this country, we have always fought for those who could not fight for themselves. So when I think of those who are coming out of prison who want to contribute, this is critical. Uh, when I think of veterans, I have here uh, the obituary of my uncle who passed away a few weeks ago. He was 77. He was a veteran in the U.S. Army and he battled through mental illness and other challenges. And we saw systemic poverty, multi-generational poverty. But had he been resourced with uh, the proper care and had he been resourced with other uh, necessities, he could have contributed even more. And so I'm very grateful for you, for this administration, uh, that's allowing for the conversation. And again, my prayer is that uh, you will continue to have wisdom and insight uh, to lead this nation Truly, uh, all of us are created equal. And so thank you for giving us an equal opportunity to uh, fight for this nation and what it means to be an American. Thank you, John. Thank you. How many people in your church? Um, well, we just started three months ago, and we have about 5,500, 6,000. Yeah, that's what I heard. I heard it's really incredible. Very quick. Yes, sir. Some of them, 45,000, 50,000 people. Mm -hmm. Some of you even more than that. So uh, I congratulate you all, and it's an honor to have you here. And you always have a friend in the White House. You know that. Yeah, Harry, you know that, right? Yes, sir. 
Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.